Hey, it's Kay, and this is Skittles, Psychiatric Advisor. Today we're going to talk about the police. At time of recording, we've only just put 2020 behind us, and if one thing other than the whole global pandemic business defined that year, it was definitely the mass protests and political action against police violence against the systemic racism leading the police to terrorize black communities and against the legal impunity with which they do so. Another important thing you might have heard about that happened in 2020 was the US presidential election, the winner of which would be faced with a public who have grown incredibly critical of the police and a collection of departments who have responded to that criticism by gassing and assaulting the civilians protesting them. The man of the hour is Joseph Harry Legs Biden, and in response to calls to abolish the police or the moderate compromise position to defund the police and allocate those funds to public services that reduce crime and hardly ever murder anyone, Biden has said, uh, no, fuck that. In fact, more funding to hire more police and provide them with more training. Now, there's a very big problem with that approach. So today, I want to focus specifically on police training. After all, a key argument against abolishing or even defunding police departments is that the police can be reformed without substantially uprooting the institution of policing. They just need more training. This approach has a massive assumption at its core that the way police behave is an anomaly and not the product of their training. We'll come back to that. Have you ever heard of Red Letter Media? They're a fairly well-known movie review channel who rose to prominence in the early 2010s due to the popularity of their reviews of the Star Wars prequels. They've been massively influential to YouTube film analysis, for better or worse, but I don't really watch them for their reviews. I watch Red Letter Media for a specific series they run called Best of the Worst in which they watch and make fun of terrible movies, often ones sent in by viewers. A few years ago, I saw one such episode, and the boys were watching something called Surviving Edged Weapons. And it was, in a word, troubling. It appeared to be a police training video highlighting how present the threat of a stabbing is for officers on duty. It does this by communicating two major points. Anyone can be an attacker and anything can be a weapon. They show a guy stabbing a cop with a fucking katana through his door. A guy who put razor blades all over his hat using that as a weapon. They show a guy with a switchblade cleverly disguised as a pen in his shirt pocket, absolutely owning these two security guards. They stress that even screwdrivers and forks can cause fatal wounds. Everything is a weapon. This commercially available rig gives an offender ready access to throwing darts hidden up his sleeve. This kind of money clip has more of a point to it than just holding cash. There's also hidden danger in this lipstick tube, popular with prostitutes. And anybody, at any time, could be about to stab you, whether a suspect is big or small, whether they're acting aggressively or calmly, whether they're being arrested for something serious or minor, and whether they're currently under arrest at all. Don't turn your back. Don't give them an opening. Anyone can be an attacker. The Red Letter Media boys surmise that this may have been a police training video in the past and got a kick out of how ridiculous a lot of its premises were and how violent a lot of its content was. The video was produced by a company called Caliber Press. Remember that name. See, I wouldn't hear it again for a year or two, but an increased public scrutiny towards the police, even before 2020, brought another name to my attention sometime later. Dave Grossman. Grossman is a law enforcement trainer with a focus on the psychology of killing, which he has named Killology. That is not a joke. To quote a Mother Jones article about him, 
Grossman has achieved semi-celebrity status as an authority on aggression, close combat, and the psychology of violence. He literally wrote the book on killing. On killing. <laughs> His books have been translated into several languages, and he says they are required reading at the FBI Academy and many law enforcement academies. He's lectured at West Point and claims to have conducted trainings for every federal law enforcement agency, every branch of the armed forces, and cops in all 50 states. For more than 19 years, he's been on the road, leading seminars and trainings nearly 300 days a year. In addition, his Wikipedia page states he has served as an expert witness in numerous state and federal court cases. So Grossman's work is quite prolific. His expertise seems to be valued within the U.S. legal system, and he clearly plays a substantial part in the training of U.S. law enforcement. So why is all of this noteworthy? Because Grossman's training is fucking horrifying. To live is Christ and to die is even better. What? It's a no-lose situation. If we live, we live in Christ. If we die, we gain. Do you understand? The warrior watched 3,000 citizens die before your eyes in pain and agony and despair in a puff of ash in a cloud of smoke. And you know one person on that plane could have stopped it. And you yearn to be that person. Some of you say, yeah, Dave, you got my number. I wish I was on that plane. Well, good. They ain't coming to your plane. They're coming to your mall. They're coming to your theater. They're coming to your church. They're coming to your kid's school. And you need to be ready for them. You cops, that means you carry off duty. So most of that is what psychologists refer to as fucking mad bruv. And I want to reiterate the significance of what I said earlier. This is not some fringe one-off case. This guy has trained cops in all 50 states for more than 10 years, training nearly 300 days a year. An old Vietnam veteran, an old retired colonel, put it to me like this. He said, Dave, most of the people in our society are sheep. They're kind, decent, gentle, productive creatures who can only hurt each other by accident under extreme provocation. And they're wolves. And the wolves will feed on the sheep without mercy. Are there wolves in the land? Are there people who would go into your child's school and kill every single child and take pleasure in doing it? Are there people who would harm you and your loved ones? Are there wolves in the land? Are there? Never forget it. The moment you try to pretend there are no wolves in the land, the moment you try to deny the existence of evil, you're in denial. And you're just another sheep. Oh. And never forget, there are wolves in the land. And there are lambs who need protecting. And then the old boy said, there are sheepdogs. He said, I am a sheepdog. I am a predator too. Grossman is training cops to view the public as a constant threat and themselves as divinely chosen warriors. Sheepdogs defending the lowly sheep from the inherently evil wolves. This speaks to an important assumption at the heart of the justice system that people who commit crimes cease to be regular people like you and me and become capital C criminals. They become a different thing. One that deserves what they get. Grossman just takes it a step further and is heavy-handed enough to describe them as predatory animals. And despite how prolific Grossman himself is, his work also seems to have an influence on others who deliver police training. As seen in a story that came out in October 2020 about material in a Kentucky police training program, containing material that even rivals Grossman's unhinged rants in a slideshow titled The Warrior Mindset. Featuring, of course, a bald eagle in front of an American flag. This slideshow stresses the virtue and necessity of violence, instructing officers to become ruthless killers and to meet violence with greater violence. Driving this point home with the quote, 
the very first Essential Four success is a perpetually constant and regular employment of violence. Jesus. Now, just hang on a second uh, as I move this strategically placed Skittles pick to reveal who that quote is from. Oh, it's Adolf Hitler, huh? What? Of course it is. And don't worry, throughout this terrifying look into the mentality that is being trained into police officers, we have a quote from Attila the Hun. Great graphic design, you fucking dicks. General Robert E. Lee, fucking Batman, under a picture that appears to depict someone aiming a mounted gun at what looks like a group of fleeing civilians. And, oh yeah, two more Hitler quotes, before capping it off with a slide depicting American soldiers and a famous Nazi slogan. Very cool police training. I'll link the full article reporting on this story, which includes this. The KSP presentation appears to draw heavily from nationally known police trainer Dave Grossman, who delivers lectures to police forces nationwide on his theory of killology. Still not a joke. Teaching police officers to embrace the responsibility to kill and making it possible for people to kill without conscious thought. Thanks, Dave. So, we've seen police training that teaches cops that everything is a potential weapon and everyone is a potential attacker. We've seen training that teaches cops they are sheepdogs and that civilians are lowly sheep who need their protection. All the while, people who commit crimes are a different species entirely. They are wolves. They are an inherently dangerous creature whose very nature requires they harm the sheep. And we've seen training that teaches cops they are warriors, that their violence is not only justified, but required. Complete with literal Hitler quotes to explain why. Hey, what do you want to bet this video gets demonetized because of how many times I've said Hitler? Support the channel on Patreon. But what if I told you all of this is connected? And not just in the sense that the history of American policing was an integral part of the institution of slavery, and racist violence is baked into its foundation. Uh, remember Caliber Press? Yeah, they've been partnered with Dave Grossman for years. Surviving Edged Weapons was a real training video that probably a lot of cops have seen. It's unclear whether that particular video is still in use for police training, but we know Caliber Press and Grossman are still spreading the exact same narratives that position the police as godsend warriors who are in constant danger from the savage and murderous public. So it's safe to assume material as bad, if not worse, is being used in its place. Here's the thing. Being a cop isn't that dangerous. Yeah, police do die on the job sometimes. You know which occupations have a higher rate of on-the-job fatalities than the police? Loggers, fishermen, pilots, roofers, garbage men, truck drivers, farmers, construction workers, landscapers, iron workers, electricians. Loggers have more than seven times the fatality rate of cops. They don't act like they're storming the fucking beaches of Normandy every day, though, do they? Oh, and according to FBI statistics, nearly half of police deaths are accidents, not fucking martial arts masters pulling a switchblade out of their shirt pocket. I have personally worked four of the jobs listed as more dangerous than being a cop. The narratives about the dangers of being a cop that we as society propagate and that the police in turn reinforce in their own training are bullshit and they're dangerous. But Grossman, his Caliber Press partner Glennon, and their various projects are not the whole picture. As harmful as their disinformation and fear-mongering are, just removing them from the equation somehow wouldn't solve these problems. In fact, the Minneapolis Police Department attempted to ban their warrior training, and their police union started offering the courses for free to undermine the ban. Which brings us to a problem that no amount of tweaking police training is going to solve. Their co-workers. 
Like in any job, the training you receive before the job begins may imbue you with a lot of knowledge, but the application of that training is always overseen and guided by senior co-workers. Be they managers or other higher-ups or simply people who've been doing your job much longer than you. Every police force in the country is full of people who have been there for decades, who've been doing things in a way that lines up significantly more with Dave Grossman's ideas than any well-meaning sensitivity training a Biden administration might try to force in. And their ability to force that in while police departments have so much individual autonomy regarding their training is questionable in the first place. But let's take a look at how senior cops talk to newbies to see what I mean. The best way to do that is to listen to what former officers have to say. It's not hard to find articles by ex-cops detailing how their training conditions officers to behave the way they do, and also how other cops take it upon themselves to reinforce that behavior. Like this article in The Atlantic that discusses how trainees watch dashcam footage of officers who are killed in the line of duty. And as they listen to the fallen officer's last desperate radio calls for help, every cop in the room is thinking exactly the same thing. I won't ever let that happen to me. That's the point of the training. They were taught that a suspect leaning into a car can pull out a gun and shoot at officers before they can react. And even when officers are pointing a gun at a suspect whose back is turned, the suspect can spin around and fire first. And that a knife-carrying suspect standing 20 feet away can run up to an officer and start stabbing before the officer can get their gun out of the holster. And in response to the possibility that an officer could make a mistake, that they could mistake a wallet for a gun, for example, officers are taught that the risks of mistakes are less, far less, than the risks of hesitation. In other words, the lives of the public are worth less than the lives of officers. A common phrase among cops pretty much sums it up. Better to be judged by 12 than carried by 6. Keep that phrase in the back of your mind. Regarding officers who mistake harmless objects for guns or neutral behavior for aggression, the article states, The officers saw what they were afraid of. They saw what they were trained to see. Or take this Medium article by the very cleverly named Officer A. Cab. This article details a time the author was instructed to arrest homeless people picking up cans because the city had some kickback deal with the waste management company, where waste management got paid by the government for our expected tonnage of recycling. When homeless people stole that recycling from the waste management company, they were putting that cheaper contract in peril. So we were to arrest as many recyclers as we could find. The writer claims they intended to ignore this order until their sergeant forced them to carry it out, saying he was detaining a 70-year-old immigrant who spoke no English, who he'd seen picking a Coke can out of a trash bin. He ordered me to arrest her for stealing trash. I said, Sarge, come on, she's an old lady. He said, I don't give a shit, hook her up, that's an order. And I did. Honestly, this entire article is harrowing. It talks about the ways he and his co-workers brutalized the homeless population of their city. It talks about people planting drugs. It talks about being made to watch footage of cops being killed. With commentary from an old racist cop who used to brag about assaulting Black Panthers. It says, to understand why all cops are bastards, you need to understand one of the things almost every training officer told me when it came to using force. I'd rather be judged by 12 than carried by 6. Hmm. Oh, and this article mentions Dave Grossman by name. One of the most important thought leaders in law enforcement is Colonel Dave Grossman, a killologist. Still not a joke who wrote an essay called Sheep, Wolves, and Sheepdogs. Cops are the sheepdogs, bad guys are the wolves, and the citizens are the sheep. Colonel Grossman makes sure to mention that to a stupid sheep, sheepdogs look more like wolves than sheep. And that's why they dislike you. The sheep resent their sheepdogs. 
The sheep resent their sheepdogs. You go out to the meadow. You ask one of the sheep. You say, hey, what do you think of the sheepdog? You know what he'd tell you? He's a bad man. <laughs> He's always racing through the streets going, Whoa! The incredible commonalities between different stories written by ex-cops about their experiences were bouncing around in my head when I came across an ex-cop YouTuber called That Dang Dad who speaks very frankly about his experiences on the force. Tonight I want to talk about the fact that I was a police officer for almost 10 years. And specifically I want to talk about the way that um, police work taught me to dehumanize people. I can't describe the cold lack of surprise I felt when in his video, How Law Enforcement Taught Me to Dehumanize, he says this. My entire training period in law enforcement, the idea of officer safety above all else was drilled into us. Better to be judged by 12 than carried by 6, they'd say. Or when discussing his training, he says this. And now let's sprinkle in a landmark essay from Lieutenant Colonel Dave Grossman, a uh, law enforcement trainer and combat researcher who is a hero to cops everywhere. I've seen him speak live. He's like a rock star to cops. What? Grossman divides the world into uh, sheep, wolves, and sheepdogs. Are you noticing some patterns? The training is horrific, but it is reinforced by the very institution of policing and by his co-workers, the officers he's meant to trust, sometimes with his life. I want to share one more clip from that dang dad's video that I think ties all of these ideas together. We were out on a call once where a, a young teen gangster was uh, shot at a family party and he was bleeding to death in front of his family. And I turned to the officer next to me and I said, man, that's really messed up, bleeding to death in front of your family. And the other cop turned to me and he said, hey, it's just a gangster, fuck him. You know, it happened when a, when a homeless person would overdose in an alley, they'd be like, eh, it's just a transient, fuck him. Eh, it's just an addict, fuck him. Fuck him. He's just a gangster. He's just a wolf, right? As a society, we have still not overcome ideas that different ethnic groups have inherent traits. So do you see what might happen when we combine that with the assertion that criminals are criminals due to inherent traits and not their material conditions? You'll notice I haven't really talked about racism yet. There are surely ways that police training reinforces racist perceptions of who is criminal, but it's important to understand that their formal training doesn't need to do that. U.S. police departments have long been systematically over-policing poor areas which tend to be less white, meaning they have more interactions with black and Hispanic people, which means they arrest black and Hispanic people at a higher rate. And as we've seen from the accounts of ex-cops, their co-workers are quick to dehumanize those people. The very environment that policing creates reinforces those ideas as much as any formal training. So, when Officer Timothy Lohman gets out of his car and immediately points his gun at 12-year-old Tamir Rice, what is informing his decisions in that moment? Maybe his own personally held racism long before he ever became a cop, but let's say that doesn't exist. Let's say he started out as the least racist guy on Earth. What is informing his actions? A job where he is over-policing black communities, where his co-workers and his own on-the-job experience are reinforcing the idea that there is something criminal about these people in these communities. Training that tells him criminals are a different species. They aren't just people who have committed a crime, they are wolves. And he is a warrior who must meet violence with greater violence, all the while knowing anything could be a weapon and anyone could be an attacker. Of course, he pulls the trigger. This is not to absolve Timothy Lohman of responsibility for murdering a child, but to say that the number of cops who would have done the exact 
same thing in his situation is probably frighteningly high. This is why calls to trust the system and just let the police go through more training to solve these problems need to be opposed completely. Funneling additional millions of dollars into police training is money that's being spent to put more officers in front of people like Dave Grossman. And any good, non-horrifying training that police might receive will be received by people entering a force that has been conditioned by the Grossmans of the world to view the public as a threat and to enforce that mindset in others. So a well-meaning sensitivity seminar will be pissing in the ocean. The cops who murdered George Floyd. The cops who murdered Breonna Taylor. The cops who again and again and again brutalize and kill unarmed, unthreatening citizens are doing exactly what they've been trained to do. Therefore, more training will only lead to more of that outcome. You want to reform this? It starts by massively shrinking police budgets, demilitarizing them, banning private training companies that police training is being outsourced to at enormous cost, and creating democratically managed public training for officers. And all of this hinges on the many, many things police are currently expected to do that they have no business doing being handled by different agencies, all while breaking up the police unions, which are not labor unions at all, so much as a cartel of organized gangsters. And by the way, they will be your greatest opposition in achieving any of these reforms. Oh, and disarm them. That's the beginning of reform. That's the bare minimum. Anything less is just passing the buck around while we wait patiently for the next Mike Brown. Don't let these fuckers waste your time. Defunding the police is reforming the police. And it should be the first step towards the phasing out and abolition of a deeply racist institution that has held a dangerous monopoly on violence and put property before human life since its inception. For more on the case for police abolition, check out Are Prisons Obsolete? by Angela Davis, and The End of Policing by Alex Vitale. Joe Biden's pretty words aren't going to stop the police murdering civilians. The reforms I just listed off might even sound radical to you, but they're still only band-aids on a grievously toxic institution that cannot be allowed to continue. If you wouldn't want these guys patrolling your community with guns, why would you want them to do it? Especially when the distinction between those two groups is ambiguous, to say the least.